So, any coding project you have done, I'm almost certain that at some point you have come across random numbers. However, if you use the, any of the libraries and functionality you find in a program language, you most likely have generated the so-called pseudo-random numbers. Mike Pound for this channel made a video about LFSR, which is a way to generate pseudo-random numbers. The reason why these approaches are called pseudo-random numbers is because they are not truly random numbers. It's basically a computer algorithm that is capable of returning a sequence of numbers each time that you basically call this function. With and the numbers that are generated I have some statistical guarantee. It's not very different from rolling a die. When you roll a die, each face has an equal chance of coming up, assuming of course we are using a fair die. Now, most algorithms generating random numbers share the same following principle. They start from a number that basically is called seed, which sets an initial state of the random generator, then it performs some operations manipulating the seed, and then it returns the such generating random number. When that function is called again, basically it takes the previous manipulated seed and basically repeats the same operations. Therefore, any of this approach is deterministic, and that's why it's better to refer to them as pseudo-random number generator. In fact, if you generate more random numbers within your program execution starting from the same initial seed, you will always get the same sequence of random numbers. If you don't believe in me, try yourself and see what happens. Even though many people think that it might be silly that a random number generator can be used to generate the same sequence of numbers every time, sometimes it's actually very useful. For instance, think about you're debugging your program that generates random numbers and you don't want to debug your code waiting for a certain you know, exception or a bug that depends on a specific occurrence of a random number. By using a fixed seed, you will always get the same sequence of random numbers, making the execution of the program deterministic, and then the bug will occur. You probably know all of this thing, and for this reason, it's now time to go to the juicy stuff. Can a computer program generate truly random numbers? Well, we just seen that that can't be possible. However, can a computer, and not a computer program anymore, generate a random number? The answer is yes. To simplify it very quickly, software cannot, hardware can. There are external devices that does this for us. However, an x86 processor that is at most 10-ish years old can do that for you without the use of any extra piece of hardware. This means that any non-relatively new Intel or MD processor is capable of generating true random numbers. This is possible because the x86 machine code has two instructions that allow us to do that. One is called rdrand and the other one is called rdseed. Both of them implement functionality to generate random numbers within your own processor. In particular, rdrand still uses a pseudo-random generator, so we haven't changed much so far. However, rdseed is our true random number generator. How can we use and leverage rdrand in a program? Well, I will show you this in C, so now we go in a bit in a computer and I'll show you that. However, I'm aware that all the programming languages have wrappers to access this functionality. So, for this video, we will focus on how to do this in C, and remember that it's gonna work only on an x86 processor. So, don't try on Raspberry Pi because it has an ARM processor. So, here I have prepared a piece of code in C, as I said. I have a main function that calls a function that I made called get true random number, which get our result as a pointer. So, here we got a pointer. And then the function also returns 
the number of failure. We will go in a bit what it means the number of failures. This function over here, the one I called the get true random number, it calls this function underscore rdc32 underscore step. I know that it's a very weird name for a function. This comes from this header. It basically includes all the intrinsic function of the x86 processors. So that's why it won't gonna work in other processors. And just to be brief, intrinsic functions are functions that to us, like in, in a program, appear to be like a function like rdc32. But internally, inside the compiler, are treated differently and typically different um, assembly code is used. And in fact, we will go into this in a bit. What happens here is that I call the function, I get the result, and the function returns a number, which is 1 if it was successful, 0 if not successful. What it means to be successful? So it's a piece of art, it should work any time. The fact is that this random number generator, doesn't matter if the one with pseudo random generator or this one, the true random number generator, are done inside your processor, but they are still separate circuitry. And it has its own clock. In particular, I read the instructions of uh, Intel, and they say that this piece of hardware within your computer, this piece of hardware within your uh, processor has and clock of 800 megahertz, which is not related to the clock of your computer. It's something completely different. So what happens is like your processor makes a request and then it has to wait until the request is satisfied. But maybe your processor doesn't want to wait and it can move on. So in that case, it's a failure. So when you compile, I'm using here GCC, which is one of the most, I suppose, famous C compiler. And I'm using a flag called dash MRD seed, which allows to include all the interesting functions we need for this code, in particular the one to generate the true random numbers. Now, because the code is not optimized to keep things uh, simple, I add a dash 03, which will optimize the code, and the assembly will be very short now. And in fact, at line 4, we will see this rdc, which is the assembly function that is calling to generate true random numbers, and the result is put in um, one of the register of the CPU. Then there are other operations related to what we do, which are not the focus of this video. We just need to focus that our compiler is doing what we want, generating true random numbers. So let's have a look how it works. This website is called Godbold, which is a very nice website for seeing in action how a lot of compilers and interpreter work. So here I'm using C, which is what we need. So I can add new executor from this, and then we will see that we are generating a thousand random numbers. Here we were very lucky. There's no failures. All the time C is generating a random numbers. So what happens is like when it fails, just retry again until you get a random number. Intel suggests that you should do this up to 10 times, because the occurrence to have 10 failures in a row, it's very rare, but believe me, it can, it can still happen. Is that when the process is busy or something? It can be either that, or because your processor has really issues. So it, most of the times, it's it just because it's busy, but if you see that it's failing a lot of times, so it might be an indicator that there's some issues with your processor. It doesn't mean that it's doomed, but still. In fact, here uh, I couldn't find an example of um, not like failures. It's always zero. Let's see what happens if I run again. Nothing. It's, it's working. Is this a new computer? <laughs> well, I'm using the computer of uh, owner of this gold bolt. Uh, so, so I'm not compiling it on my computer. So who knows like, what could happen inside. So, the thing is the following. How useful is this? Like, it's very useful. The answer is no. And uh, so, uh, people might question why I'm dying all this fast of generating true random numbers and then it's not useful. Well, it depends on useful for one. It's not useful to generate random numbers within your code because first of all, it's low. So people have compared with uh, pseudo random generators and statistically, it's lower. 
But let's assume that you have all the times, so you don't care about how slow it is. Why it's not encouraged to use? Because a true random number generator has no statistical guarantee of the numbers that it generates. That's why it's called RDC. How oh, do you mean, as in it could come up with something like a, I don't know, an even number or a number one? It can come up with no anything. It means that the pseudo random generators, uh, most of them are guaranteed that every number have the, have the same probability to be drawn. I see. So we say it's a uniform distribution. Here, there's no guarantee. So you might have the same number time after time. After time. You might have a preference to a set of numbers, like uh, towards, so, it, so we say that the distribution is skewed. It might be skewed, because we don't know what source of the entropy the processor is using. Can you track that, or no? Is that... No. But, the reason why it's called RSEED is the secret to why it's useful. Because you can use it to generate a random number to be used as a seed. I have the same function get true random number, but this time I use the true random number using RDSeed to initialize the pseudo random generators within C. So I use the result to feed SRAND that sets the seed, and then afterward I have a for loop that generates a thousand of random numbers. Let's uh, execute this, add new executor from this, and here we go. These are pseudo random numbers generated starting from a true random number generator. We can basically try again to execute this. It's going to take a while, and as you can see, all the numbers are different. So they're pseudo random, randomly seeded. It's a pseudo random number generator initialized with a true random number. You can see that this has changed, and it's going to change again, it's going to change again, and let's see how it goes. So the next state, we're going to shift one to the right, so one. Uh, one zero, and then zero. Thing is, am I going to pass it integers, strings? I can do all of the above. Let's just check that I'm not lying because I do sometimes. 